Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Yo. As well as Chris, aka CGM. What's up? And the featured guest of the week, Great One Devor, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you doing? What is going on? I appreciate you guys having me on the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, you are the uh, the host of your very own podcast, the Not For Debate podcast, is one that I listen to quite frequently. With uh, I think you and your co-host, Banks, have some really interesting dichotomy going. Uh, he doesn't always agree with everything you say, and I think that adds to the quality of the podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're we're still a work in progress. We're we're trying to figure some things out. It's really hard to get on the same schedule, you know. But um, we 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 we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be popping this year. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's a really entertaining podcast. I'm not just saying that because you're on here. I I do listen to it. Um, so if you, the if you guys at home don't know who Great One Devor is, uh, me and him kind of. How did, how did we meet? You, we met on an online Madden stream, right? Because you were playing uh, Madden and I was playing Madden. Um, and, you know. Uh, you know what? I think it might have been when they just released Draft Ranked for one of the Maddens. And I think we might have been talking. And it was like a rumor going around. If you defeat everybody, or they, all your opponents, and we would get that's, some money or something, we stand to like right. 3 o'clock in the morning doing that. <laughs> That's right. Oh my goodness. That it has been a while. Wow. No, yeah, you nailed it. That's that's exactly how we met. And uh here we are, you know. I've if you guys don't know Great One Devore, he is my Achilles heel when it comes to Madden. Um he is a problem After in After Mole. Well, Mole makes the game. He doesn't count, right? You know. He's a creator. Mole doesn't make the game, he tests the game. Yeah, okay. Same difference. But, uh, no, it's not. It's completely different. <laughs> Programming Put and the ref back completely on different. the field. Can I, can I just trigger Mole, please? Without being interrupted. <laughs> so, great I doubt he's going to get triggered. He's just be like, what do you have to understand about EA? Here's what you have to understand about microtransactions. Um, <laughs> so, great one, Devor. Uh, just kidding, Mole. We love you. Um, great one, Devor. You're going to be getting uh, Madden 20 this year? I'm still on the fence about getting bad at this year because of the fact that it's coming out a little earlier than what it's supposed to be. And there's a lot of games coming out back to back to back. Wait, wouldn't under any other normal circumstances, a game coming out early, wouldn't that be a better thing? Well, due to my dissatisfaction to matter over the last several years, I've grown accustomed to liking NBA 2K a whole lot better. Mm. See, I've never been good at basketball games. That's why that's probably why I don't like them as much. Yeah, I kind of suck at them. And then my problem every time I play NBA 2K is uh, I suck at the substitution, so then everyone's tired, and then I wind up with my whole bench in, and then I lose. Well, See, well, here's that. the thing. Double R actually got me in to play in 2k this year because i was like "Eh, i don't know and then like i saw him stream in the park and because i don't play online because i don't like dealing with the whole substitution thing i'll leave my starters in the whole game Mm -hmm. but if you guys prefer you could choose your own bill like if you want to just rebound and block shots you just rebound and block shots it doesn't take are are you talking about the uh the archetype the archetype yeah yeah I had my guy as a uh, pure shooter, three-point shooter. No, I was ter- I'm terrible at basketball games. I was terrible when I played basketball for one season. And I'm actually really good at baseball games, but I don't like baseball. So I don't get <laughs> Here's the thing, honest. though. Great but when one. I play them, I'm good at them. Great one. Here's the thing. Uh, you're kind of known in the community, if you will. Uh, not only for your podcast, but mainly Madden, right? Because we've seen you sometimes even without any kind of announcement just spark off a stream and get 20, 30 viewers, and you're literally playing one viewer after another on your stream, uh, getting wins, you know, super competitive. So, like, why wouldn't you want to continue that? Why? What? What's the drawback to getting Madden 20? 
because we're at the time of us recording this for everyone listening it's uh july 9th in about two weeks from today uh we have the the ea access early uh madden 20 coming out so why wouldn't you want to continue that for your channel well when i look at 2k i feel like i can all of my subscribers with 2k it's like more of a, a more of a more community than what madden is to be quite honest with you like i can like just say if we all three of us were playing on the same team i could still play with three other subscribers at the same time opposing to in madden i will play one subscriber at one time and i just feel like 2k is just more let's say youtube streamer friendly but it's just more you, i could just do a whole lot more with more people there's more potential. I mean, there's there's always squads. Mm, see, that's the thing. I, uh, Double R knows how I feel about Ultimate Team. I won't even get into that right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> right there with you with it, though. If they was to bring back the old the old way of doing squads where you can... I forgot how, what they called it. It was like... Wasn't it like up. trios or something like that? Yeah, like if they bought that back, then yeah, I would play it. But as far as me having to grind out and get these high overall rank cards, I don't find it fun when I see a linebacker jump 50 feet in the air like his NFL blitz back in the early 2000s. No. I just don't find it fun. No, I get that. I think if they did that with the actual core game and not just the, uh, the pay-to-win game, that it would be a lot more fun. Like if you could just take like your regular – like if I wanted to play the Steelers, i play the Steelers roster. That's on the regular right. game. I don't have to go into Ultimate Team and buy everybody I need. Right. I think that's a yeah. whole lot better than what it is. See, that's one thing I really appreciated about Draft Champs is because it gave you the feel of playing Mutt without actually spending money on the game. And you always got the newest, freshest cards. And Well, they didn't take Draft Champs out, did they? They didn't take the, the Draft Champs out, no. Okay, because I was going to say... Knowing Madden, if they did take it out, they'd reintroduce it in two years as Draft Champs 2.0 and call it a new feature, and it would have like <laughs> an extra uh, round in it, you know? Oh, geez. Uh, now you're really, now we're all triggering more. EA giveth and EA taketh away, essentially, is what it is. Well, and I think EA is really lazy, and I know I, I know it's stupid to get kind of, uh, complain about the refs being off the field oh, but you know but the reason they did it was because they didn't look good. so and i know that they're focused on other things but either leave them in or make them look good spend 15 minutes and make them look decent i think you it's know a lot how? more than 15 minutes bro uh yeah well i mean but when when your motto is if it's in the game it's in the game and then you take things that are in the game out of the game uh, you know, they don't, I mean, even the little things like the sideline cut scenes they've taken out. Well, I mean, it costs less to make, to take something out than it does to make something look better. Yep. Pretty much. That's what well, it comes down to. They're trying to put money into other places of the game. I, I like that. I don't care if the rest on the field. I'm not one of those guys that says, hey, this grass is the wrong green. No, I get it. I save it, that but... for people like you, Chris. No, I get it. But, you know, when your game still doesn't do things that NFL 2K5 does, you know, I mean, give me a break. It and still looks a hell of a lot better than 2K5, here's though. The thing. Here's the thing. That seems to be everyone's common denominator and used to be mine, too, is the, the quick draw excuse to, like, anything Madden-related mm -hmm. is, oh, but 2K was able to do it so long ago. When was the last time you actually went back and watched 2K? I, I can it promise looks like you. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this: Who did the better halftime show, ESPN 2K5 listen, or 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 Madden? Listen, it's, it's a valid 15 argument. Fifteen years later, and they the still can't show a good anyway. halftime show. It's, it is well, a valid and 90 argument. Ninety percent of people, ninety percent of people, skip the halftime show, but they still can't do it good one and maybe if they did a good one that actually showed you highlights of the other games people would actually watch it nope i still wouldn't watch it 
I probably would watch it because I'm all about the presentation in, in video I'd games. Probably still, yeah, I, am I too. wouldn't watch it. But here's the thing. You can't, totally we have it. to, as gamers, stop saying stuff like, oh, but, you know, uh, by the way, Chris, you're breathing extra loud and I don't appreciate it. Um, we have to, as gamers, we have to go away from saying, um, oh, but 2K5 was able to do it because tell you what the other day i pulled up a video of someone who was and there's a lot of people who do this playing nfl 2k5 with 2019 rosters um the game doesn't look great it, it doesn't even run great um sure some of the visual elements they, they can be rivaled and of course the presentation the halftime show the whole espn studio feel uh is definitely something that ea should strive towards but large in part i mean the rest of the game is not all that great you know what i'm mad about that they still haven't brought back the ambulance that comes on the field and runs everybody over before they get to the end <laughs> that was fake <laughs> that was so <laughs> fake we're trying to get some authenticity in the game of madden <laughs> me and double r go back and forth about when madden took it to 360 with next gen Madden 06. Mm -hmm. That was the most beautiful thing we probably have ever seen in our lives. Like they finally have done it. Yep. <laughs> Do I remember Donovan McNabb's biceps were glistening. His jersey was the right color green. And you know, you you lob sure? the, you lob the ball up and when the receiver caught it, it made this giant like explosion sound effect. I mean But did but did but were the refs on the field? Yes. Uh... They look really good. The refs look really good. Were the refs on the field, though? Yeah, they look really good. And I don't think they even looked that bad in Madden last year. I mean, I just it just gives it a more authentic feel. That's all I'm saying. It's not that it's not that they're out of the game and I, it's awful. My thing is it's, the refs not being more, in the game is not going to keep me from getting the game. No, but if it I gives had, it a more authentic to to feel. It, I would buy it if I do, since I don't. I have to hope that I can get a code for yeah. it. Yeah, you know, Chris funny? just scratched the surface. To be quite honest with you, refs is not the big the biggest problem, but that's just one of the problems. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Is it's little things like that that they take out of the game, and and it, and it's just because they have no competition, so they don't have to care. And that's just it. You know, we we can sit here and nickel and dime the game with. Oh, what it should have, what it shouldn't have. That's just it. They have no competition. It's a couple of uh, football games on Steam. Okay, yeah, you're not getting any of them. I'm not no PC gamer, so let's not even talk about. You're that. not getting any one of those. Let's be real. They're also all garbage. So EA <laughs> could literally come out with anything, and it's, it'll have an NFL logo, and we'll buy it because we're consumers, we're gamers. That's just what we do. See, um, that I disagree with because people said that about Star Wars and me too, and I didn't get the last Star Wars. What is it, Battlefront Two? I didn't get that. Uh, it's slightly different though. We're talking about. It's, I have every Star Wars game ever made. I haven't played all of them, but I have them. Right, but except we're for that one because I was like, EA screwed up the last one. And they're going to screw this one up, okay. so I well, didn't touch it. Let me ask you this. Has Madden, or has Star Wars, the video game, come out once a year, every year since, like, 1990? Basically. No, it hasn't. There's definitely something that comes out, like, every year, every other year, something like that, that has a Star Wars name on it. I'm just saying, there's a lot of people, you know, who say that they're not going to get uh, Madden. Well, I mean, if you're going to ride that pony, then how much better do you expect it to be every year? Trust me, I want... It's not, it's not like if you go from the last Doom game, what was Doom 3 that came out a long, yeah. long, long fucking time ago. I was right. in I was in Iraq when that came out mm -hmm. to Doom 2016, and you look at that and go, holy crap, this looks so much better. Oh, yeah. But if it came out every year, it wouldn't look that much better. It would progressively get better, but it wouldn't look that much better. Great one, Devor. You touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, one of your reasons for not getting Madden or thinking about not getting Madden. What other games are you considering getting this year? Well, obviously, 2K comes out September 10th, if I'm not mistaken. And I used to be a hardcore Gears of War fan. 
back back in the day, I was ranked like 527th when Gears of War 2 was out online for Guardian. And of course, the best game of all time, Shenmue 3, is finally going to drop oh in God. November. I'm Recon. Sorry. I love, I like, I like how they're, what they're doing with Ghost Recon this year. You know what? I, um, you just mentioned Gears of War 2. I, I get real fond memories of uh, playing it on Thanksgiving night the year that it was out, and uh, just absolutely slaughtering these Thanksgiving noobs. Uh, I used to be pretty good at the game, too, believe it or not. Um, I, don't know I used to be a big old nerd on that. I used to have the website saved on my computer just to make sure that I would not lose that 500 spot because <laughs> usually I'm sitting like the 30,000 and above, but that was the only game where I was literally sitting in the triple digits that's pretty cool. So you're up there in the leaderboards. Actually pull it up. I might actually pull it up right now and actually look and see where I'm at right now. I bet you you're still in the top 1,000. Wouldn't be surprised. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. That was about like, it was like eight years ago, maybe. When did, when did Gears of War 2 come out? 2009, 2010? I, I think 2009, yeah. So um, I think a game all three of us are getting me uh sarge and chris is doom this later on this year are, are you thinking about getting that too uh as far as doom is concerned i probably played doom what was the one that played came out for the xbox with the flashlight which one was that uh, uh doom 3 doom 3 yeah Doom three i bought yeah. that one after i watched the movie with the rock in it because i was like <laughs> oh my goodness that, 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 people say that movie was terrible but it was actually a really good movie in my honest that movie was terrible except for like three minutes of it <laughs> rock isn't, did an excellent job isn't doom gonna be cross-platform i don't know that no. it is or is that or is that the, what was the game you were telling me that was call, gonna of, be duty. Cross-platform? Oh, oh, call, call of duty. duty yeah modern warfare which is another so, uh, game I'm thinking about getting this year, just because I think it'll help me kind of leverage uh, the the sheer number of PS4 viewers I have with the Xbox viewers, and finally play a true uh, cross-platform game. And I'm sure so you suck at it, and then never play it again. I know I'm going to be garbage <laughs> at it. Trust me. I'm he'll trying. yell at he'll out. yell at me and blame me for getting the uh, team killed when I squad up with him, and then be like, "Chris, that's your fault." I can't wait. How do you get killed there? You're absolutely right, and I can't wait. You know, and funny. then of course, Go ahead, and of up. course, it won't be my fault, but it'll be blamed on me. Well, you're the scapegoat. Yeah, it's like I'm. It, it's almost like I'm. It's almost like I'm the stepchild of your uh, of your uh, stream platform. You are. That's why you're the half cent. Um, That's why he wants you to do well. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Um, so about Great One of War. That's why somebody's breathing in there. Yeah, that's Chris. Chris, could you please stop breathing into the mic, or just stop breathing in general? That's um, not nice. So if if you haven't heard of Great One Devor, if you go to his channel, it's going to be readily apparent that he's a huge Miami Dolphins fan. Uh, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, we open up the NFL season against the Miami Dolphins. Wait, wasn't We're, Josh a Dolphins fan for like a season? He is a Dolphins fan. He still says he is. Yeah, he's a traitor. I thought, no, he, was, I thought he was a Dolphins a fan, and then a Bears fan, and then a Ravens fan, and then a Bears fan, and then Dolphins. I thought he was a Raiders fan. At no, point. Josh is a Dolphins fan. Um, he's a traitor. He's a traitor. <laughs> so actually, he's going to the uh, Miami Dolphins Ravens game on September eighth, the home opener. Um, usually, when the Ravens play the Dolphins, there's a gentleman's bet that goes on between me and Great One of War. I forgot what uh, happened last time, but the Ravens definitely won. You lost that bet against me. And do you have anything you want to maybe bet against? It can be a job. I wouldn't bet. do it. He bulges on bets. Well, as as far as right now goes, because and I went to Engraven's football tournament uh, last month. I don't know if you watched the video for that, but we we I'm I'm expecting to see him because I plan on going down to Miami for the game, so I got a bet with him. 
But I, I think any any more bets I plan on taking, I'm going to take them after preseason just to make sure things are supposed to be the way that I <laughs> envision them to be. I mean, you can't make a bet with Raven anyway. He doesn't come through on his end. Yes, I do. So, you so did are not you finish actually going to go to that game? You lost a bet where you had to oh, eat yeah, a bowl absolutely. of candy and you couldn't do it. I can't wait for... Uh, yeah. I, I drove by the uh, the new Raider stadium in Las Vegas. and I can't I, wait for Raven to try to change the subject again. I can't wait for uh, that stadium to be finished and for the Ravens to start playing. He doesn't fulfill any of the bets that he... Uh, other than the spoonful of mayo, he has failed on every bet that... Uh, so you know what? That's why we're getting separate checks in the uh, restaurant when you're in DC. <laughs> Listen, Chris, if I'm gonna fly fourteen or seventeen hundred miles to come out there and see you, you are paying for the tab, no matter where we go. <laughs> you said you're coming to DC. Am I invited to this event? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no. If I come out there, it's um, it's definitely something that I'll I will let you know about, and we'll definitely. But why up. why am I paying for all your meals? When you, uh, well, I can't. I can't afford to pay for all your meals. Now, I'll great one divorce me. coming, so you're paying for mine and his. Wrong. That's not happening. <laughs> Chris, I'm, I'm very, very cheap. I just want a cheeseburger and fries. I don't drink alcohol, so I just want a sprite. So that's my 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 total is probably going to be like sixteen dollars. So that's not too much. For I me. know great one divorce too well to know exactly what he likes to eat. I kid you not. His favorite food, or his favorite deal, is a four for four dollar at Wendy's. Correct me if I'm wrong, great one. But that that is a good deal. That, yeah, that is heaven on earth right there. <laughs> I tried to uh, checkers. They came out with a four a four dollar meal too, but they started making funnel cake, mm-hmm. same grease to cook the fries as the funnel cake. So the fries started tasting like funnel cake. So I stopped eating there. So I'm going back to Wendy's. I'm going back to <laughs> going back to four. You're going for the four for four. <laughs> Absolutely, with the uh, strawberry lemonade, light ice, and two pa- and two packs of sweet and sour sauce. They try to skimp you with the sweet and sour sauce and charge you fifty cents. They charge you for that? Yeah, everybody charges you for that now. Hell yeah, they charge you for that. For when sauce? I go to Japanese hibachis, they charge me for uh, yum yum sauce. What? You know, my favorite fast food is Chick Fil A because it's clean when you go inside. You get good service. The food's a little bit better. And uh, it's just my favorite of the fast food chain. You know, you know, what's what's, funny? You know what really sucks about Chick-fil-A, though? Is that the only time I ever crave it is on Sunday. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I, was, well, I was reading this article. Um, believe it or not, the, the healthiest fast, fast food joint. You would think it's Chick-fil-A, right? Any takers? <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah, I, I would think it was Chick-fil-A too, yeah. No, it's not. It's actually Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, that's my new addiction. Well, that's because you rap. crap. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you crap your guts out, so all the calories you consume come right out of you immediately. So That doesn't don't... have anything to do with the restaurant being clean, being clean. Right. No, he said it's the healthiest. It's because it's, it cleans your guts. He said it's the like cleanest. It was rated the, the healthiest fast food restaurant. Oh, I think it's the cleanest. My no, it, it 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 cleans your guts out. That's why, and it's like taking a colon cleanse. It's okay, like, Chris. Just it because they don't the offer mayo in the burrito doesn't make rap. it bad. Have I had the Supreme Crunch Wrap. That oh, that is a very oh, that is so it's good. excellent. Oh my goodness! I was <laughs> I had that like three Supreme weeks ago. I probably went to Taco Bell six times <laughs> since three weeks ago. I'm in love with that thing. Like and that you is know just what? the to to Chris's point that you know it, going to Taco Bell is like a colon cleanse. It's it doesn't ever have that effect on me. I don't know what he's eating there, but I, I've never had that experience going there. Ever. Well, let me just say I had a big box to date before my college graduation, and I was not doing well during the graduation ceremony. I can picture that. Well, let me. Can I ask you a question, Chris? Are you going to an actual Taco Bell or are you going to the Monopoly Taco Bell and KFC? No, I, uh, either one is the same food. Oh, 
No, no, it's no, no. That's, no. See, that's no. where you, you go wrong. to an actual Taco Bell. See, that's where you flagging up at. You go into them, you go into the Monopoly stores. You need to go to an actual thing where everything is being cooked the same. Listen, according according to Demolition Man, every restaurant in the world is going to be Taco Bell. <laughs> but actually, the one by the college the night before I graduated was a Taco Bell itself. It wasn't the Monopoly KFC Taco Bell. Have you guys so, ever taken a chance with eating at one of those uh, half McDonald's, half gas stations? No. Yeah. I was a security guard, man. Where are those that I had never seen that before. Yeah, they have them out here in Vegas. Oh no, my. Go you ahead. know what I won't do? I won't eat at Subway and and Walmart. I'm surprised them things are still in business. I don't. I, don't... Bro, I go to I go to Publix now for subs. I don't eat I mean, at Subway since I moved down here. I'm not a big fan of Subway. I don't know what it is about. You know, if I was to get Subway. I'd run in, get it, and get out. If you spend more than three minutes in there, you start smelling like the bread or whatever it is that they're cooking in there. Um, you just it, that stench kind of attaches itself to you, and everyone for the rest of the day will know you went to Subway. <laughs> and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like when you go to like Burger King or something. Oh and yeah, your car smells like Burger King for like four days. I dare you to try to wash out the uh the the stench of a whopper from your upholstery it's not happening well i tell you their former spokesman jared fogel's probably getting a foot long every day while he's locked up <laughs> is he still in jail yeah he's a he's a child molester alleged wait did he get convicted he's convicted I think he got convicted oh, well then yes he's he's a child molester yeah he's a, a fat bastard <laughs> <laughs> You're taking us really personally, aren't you? Yeah. He's, Chris, well, he's do me a favor. Chris, do me a favor. Hmm. Take, a, take a seat. Do you want some pizza? Of course no. he does. Chris turning out, down food? No way. Sergeant, I have to ask you a question now. What okay. is the best pizza you've ever had? That's That's... Worldwide, let me put that worldwide. Uh, it depends, though. Are we talking Chicago style or New York style? Well, because to me, there's two different New York things. Style, we don't get that here in Maryland and DC. We just have Papa John's, Domino's, Lido's. Okay, best pizza is this little place in Gildeland, like, yeah, in Gildeland, New York. It's called Nikki P's. It's connected to New York. There you go. Is it called Nikki P's? This place is, they have great pizza and they don't deliver. You have to go pick it up. But when you walk in, they have a bakery there too. So like as soon as you go in, the first thing you see is all the cakes and then pastries and everything in there. And it just smells delicious and you can't walk out of there without buying something else. It's it's so good. That pizza is like that everything's made right there. Like the sauce is all made there, everything. It's is there delicious. anything better than a mom and pop pizza joint? Yeah, like as far as if you're if you're gonna oh, go man. get pizza, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get better? good pizza, you're gonna get it from a hole in the wall place. Yeah. I, I don't know anybody who who eats Little Caesars or Pizza Hut or anything like that. Now granted oh my gosh. in the early nineties, <laughs> in the early nineties, Pizza Hut had the pizza. I don't know what happened to them. They but, got rid of the Bigfoot. I don't know what they did, but it, it just got, has not been When they got rid of the good. Bigfoot, it was garbage. I don't think Little Caesars has ever been good. No, Little Caesars is poverty pizza. It, yes. it was it was good back in the day, like in the early 90s. I remember when they was back in the Kmart. We used to get a slice every t- all the time. I Little think... Caesars is like cardboard, cheese, and sauce. That's it. You know what's now, crazy? I don't know... I don't know if Chris remembers it goes to DC enough, but Chris, do you know about that uh, jumbo slice place right there in Adams Morgan? Yeah, I've been there. It is disgusting. It gives me a headache. <laughs> but as far I, as Chicago style pizza goes, the best place I've had that was this little mom and pop place. I don't remember the name of the place in Chicago when we were there for uh for a nerd convention. And um 
we had ordered pizza the night before from like this delivery place and it tasted like cardboard. And I was like, this is God awful. Who likes Chicago pizza? And then we went to this mom and pop place. I was like, I'm going to give this one more chance. And they brought it out in the pan with That's a fork and a spoon. It. Yep. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I you was know, like, this isn't pizza. This is like lasagna on bread. It's so I good. remember going to the old Red Roof Pizza Huts and eating dinner there. And now they're all gone. No, nope, there's still some here. We got one thing. right right down the street from us. Here's the thing. I'm from Chicago, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call a spade a spade. If it's good pizza, whether it's New York or Chicago style, I'm going to say it's good pizza. I'm not the type of Chicagoan to say, you know, uh, oh, because I'm from Chicago, Chicago has the best pizza. No, it's actually different. Um, it's a different slice for depending on what you're doing. So if you're on the move, a New York sli- uh, uh, style slice is definitely the way to go. But well, that you're... depends. Are you talking like the round pizza or the Sicilian pizza that's like square? No, no, I'm talking about the uh, the round pizza. Okay, yeah, that's easy to travel with. That's, the square that, pizza is a little messy. If you're on the move, that's a, a slice of New York style pizza. You're good to go. But if you're willing to sit down like a civilized person for like 30 minutes and conversate with people, then definitely uh, the Chicago style is the way to go. And, uh, you know, what's funny is... Uh, there's people who posted videos on this, and I'm only saying this because you mentioned that Little Caesars is poverty pizza. Something There's something <laughs> to say about a slice of pizza that doesn't have melting cheese. And I'll explain. So there's, you know how people apparently like to eat cold pizza. They don't even like to microwave it just straight out of the box the next day. No, like I hate microwave that. pizza. It tastes like cardboard. Well, any other pizza you microwave, the cheese melts. You can literally the next day put a little Caesar slice in the in the microwave for ten minutes and the cheese will not melt. It'll burn before it melts. <laughs> I'm I kid you not. I'm gonna have to test that. There's a little Caesars down the road here. I'm gonna have to buy a slice. There are people who try to put it in the microwave see if it'll melt. You, there are people who upload YouTube videos to prove that that the cheese does not melt. It burns. Oh my god. <laughs> Just, uh, my wife turns around, she goes, You're cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're already getting yourself in a jackpot. So how many pizzas do you eat in one sitting since you eat 150 pieces of sushi in a sitting? Oh, my God. You're such an annoying <laughs> dude. Okay, so great one, Devor. One time I, I was intermittent fasting for three days, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to break my, my fast. And if you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's when you eat once a day um, during like a two- or three-hour um, interval of time and I'm like you know what I'm going to break this fast I'm going to go get sushi I ended up getting like 8 or 9 rolls of like 10 pieces each and I crushed them and ever since then Chris has been what? giving me a hard time about it <laughs> that, not, not true that not, has nothing to do with it and first of all intermittent fasting in that 2 hour period you probably eat about 3 quarters of the calories that you would in an entire day because you gorge yourself because you're not going to eat for no, another not necessarily. Hours. But anyways, you were telling me how you go to the sushi buffet and you take and you take all this sushi and this and that and it's going to it turns out to be nine rolls and and I get it, I order it and I get six rolls at the beginning. So I don't Great one Devor, you don't strike me as a sushi up. type of guy. I, I could tear up some shrimp tail pearl. Don't don't get it. Give, give me food. I can tear that mess up. If it was more affordable, whoo, I'll give five of them. I can tear that bugs up, man. So, so five you, rolls. So you don't eat the raw stuff. You eat the deep fried rolls. Uh, if my girl gets it, then yeah, I will eat it. But if I was actually going in there and paying for my own things, shrimp tail pearl all the way. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. I know Sarge doesn't I, like sushi. I've never so. had sushi. I don't like the idea of eating raw fish. It sounds like oh, it be that way. That shrimp terrapoto. That- <laughs> <laughs> I used to be that way, and then I tried it, and I was like, eh. And then I, they're like, have one more, and I'm like, actually, this is pretty good. That's pretty much how I got introduced to uh, uh, sushi as well. I actually started off with a California roll, which has zero raw fish in there. Um, 
and then it's move imitation crab and avocado isn't it yeah and like a little bit of cream cheese i believe i don't know that's a philadelphia yeah, yeah. roll um a philly roll and then i moved up to a tempura roll and then i'm like you know what i'm gonna try that you know one of the the sushi rolls that have like the actual raw fish on the outside i didn't want, i didn't even want to touch it at first but you know just like chris said you you give it a a, a nibble he, one roll becomes two and and next thing you know you're enjoying it for what it is that's what she said next oh. we're gonna ha- i think we're gonna have to do a challenge where sarge and colby eat uh sushi why i won't i'm not gonna eat sushi dude <laughs> unless unless i'm good and drunk and somebody convinces me to do it i'm not i'm probably never gonna try sushi listen if i ever come down to north carolina you're having sushi no and i'll pay for it I, I did not agree with that i'll pay for it oh, nah, we're going to north carolina you gotta get some por- pork barbecue that's, that's what i'm talking about i will take you to a good barbecue place i won't eat i won't eat raw fish i'll take you to a barbecue place where the fish is cooked <laughs> you already know dude if i come down to north carolina i'm definitely down for some good barbecue some burnt ends some of that uh, back strap that i hear tastes like candy sarge let me ask you this the barbecue that you eat does that have like the vinegar in it or you eat it some other way it's got vinegar in it it's kind my father's from north carolina and, uh, all the time. tomato paste and all, all kinds of good it's it's really good yeah a good barbecue is awesome but they also have like the uh they have like texas style rubs here too so I mean, dude there's either kind of barbecue here there's so many but, different kind of like there's that like the East Coast, the East Coast, the East Coast Southern barbecue is really good. That's real thick, flavorful sauce. Isn't isn't the Eastern North Carolina um, the sauce that that's known for its vinegary taste? I, I don't know. I just know it's good because I know they have a <laughs> Texas style barbecue sauce, Kansas City, where it's uh, it's more on the sweet side, and Kansas City is probably more runny than. I say Texas is probably the thickest of them all. I, I don't know what I, I would, prefer. No, I never had barbecue in Texas. The only time I was in Texas was for army training. We didn't get to go out to eat a whole lot of barbecue. Yeah, and I'm sure you were on a rigorous diet at that point, too. I mean, they didn't care what you ate as long as you can get your hands on it without getting in trouble. <laughs> well, we used to go over to the Air Force dining hall and eat their food because they actually had people who cared what they ate. Whereas if you go to the army mess hall, it's like, what do you want for breakfast? You want brown grits? slop or okay, green grits. slop? Okay, grits. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want for breakfast? Grits? No, I want, I want some of the eggs. No, you get grits. Here you go. <laughs> I, I got to say, um, the only time I've ever tried grits was when we did a road trip back in 2008 um, to the Midwest, which or towards Kansas City. And I think we stopped in Kentucky somewhere. And it was like a, it was mainly like a Cracker Barrel type restaurant where it's like country style food. And every dish that you ordered came with complimentary grits. I'm like, okay, sure. Let's try it out. I've never had it before. And I got to say, that definitely sounds Southern. I don't get it. I I tasted it and I'm like, I I don't understand. I put a little knob of butter in there and it still didn't taste good. It, it, It actually doesn't, it's not that it tastes bad. It doesn't taste like anything. It's really I don't, bland. I'm not a, I'm not Try mixing it with it. eggs. It's super bland, bro. Like I said, I, I added some butter, some salt, and, and it didn't do anything for it. I'm like, how do people eat this? I might be the only guy that, that's from the South that doesn't like grits. Right? It is disgusting. Like but again, try that. Try it with eggs. It tastes okay. better with eggs. I'll definitely Top try some scrambled really eggs up in there. Eggs. Just scoop it in there. Mix it in there. It eggs. tastes a whole lot better. That's like putting sausage or bacon in anything. It makes it taste better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, growing up, one of my favorite things to eat, you know, for breakfast was uh, my mom would chop out, chop up some hot dogs and mix it in with some eggs, scrambled eggs. I would crush that. I remember getting that for like on my birthday breakfast, and I'm like, man, that's this is amazing. I haven't eaten it since, but I remember it being really good. So yeah, adding meats to anything. It was anything, so good I never touched it again. Adding meats to anything really it steps it up a notch, for sure. 
Yeah. I, I meat fills you up more too. So I mean, you can eat potatoes and stay full. Potatoes oh yeah, but steak. the protein in the You could eat bananas and stay full. Really anything. I don't like bananas. I'm not an ape. Oh, <laughs> that's as bad as saying yes. uh that's as bad as saying ask. complaining about the grass and madden in my opinion. Yeah, how do you compare never mind, I'm not I'm not gonna even go there. It makes no <laughs> sense. What you're saying makes absolutely no sense. So <laughs> Uh, great one, Devor. What are what are your goals for the rest of this year for 2019 uh, for your YouTube channel? Well, obviously, I think being one of the most the top Miami Dolphins YouTubers, that's number one. Uh, I know I've been a little inconsistent as of late. I've been extremely busy. Uh, as far as streaming goes, can, can we just expand it to actual? Cause I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously considering not streaming anymore on YouTube, just because they got rid of YouTube Gaming and it's, it's, it's really unorganized now. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this decision between Twitch or Mixer or whatever upcoming streaming services about to oh, come okay. out. I might so, just hop on that. So you're still streaming? I thought for a second you were gonna stop streaming and only do like videos, upload videos. Oh no, no, no! Two K is coming out. Um, definitely gonna be streaming. You know, I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick, I'm gonna uh, get the. Or Madden 20, you can you can come get some if you want to, and then if I enjoy it, then I'll buy Madden. But if I don't, you just won't see me playing it on the first day. Because I will uh, say, but, as an actual consumer on your channel, I will say my favorite videos that you put out are the pregame and postgame uh, Miami Dolphins reaction videos. Uh, I think didn't you used to do those for the Ravens, and then they just started losing, so you stopped doing it. I used to do it, but then I'm like, you know what? I, I just, I didn't feel like it. Um, I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to put my time and energy into because there was quite a bit of research involved. You really have to know what you're talking about. You can't just flick on a camera and, and start talking. You know, there's, it's quite That's a bit. That's not true because you don't know what football is. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Yeah, people football just go up on there and just talk. But like back when me and Rainer Ravens first met, there was like literally one Miami Dolphins YouTuber. Now there's like five. So, right. well, I mean, before the I was getting, I was getting my tail kicked by Red Ravens, uh, Engraving, uh, Black Lion Vids. All these Ravens fans just kept on trolling me every time we would play the Baltimore Ravens. So now I got a little bit of firepower this year. Shout out to so, uh, Black Lion Vids, by the way. He's an avid listener of our podcast, listens to every single one. Appreciate you. So, does anybody remember before the uh, Seahawks actually won a Super Bowl and were decent? If they ever saw a, a Seahawks fan, uh, very few. I think they were non-existent. Well, back when Sean Alexander was playing, I saw a lot of Sean Alexander jerseys. Yeah, but uh, outside of that, no. To be honest with you, I think I created the Legion of Boom. <laughs> if, if we have if we have time, I would like to tell that story. Hey, you know, go ahead, go ahead. How, how did you create the Legion of Boom? So back when Madden was actually good, Madden, I, I, you know, Give I, us a I like when well, probably Madden eleven, Madden ten ish. So back then, I like to play with a whole bunch of different teams, and then I came across the Seahawks. Back then. Before Russell Wilson got there, they had Clinton Portis's cousin as the quarterback. He was Josh Portis. Mm-hmm. So I had him as my quarterback. And then, of course, I had Julius Jones as the running back. And then TJ Hushmanzada was on the squad. But then when we got to the defense, Earl Thomas was the rookie. So I kept him at safety. And then Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner was there. But nobody knew who Brandon Browner or Richard Sherman were because they didn't have a face. Their overall was still sitting like the, the early 70s of overall. And they had Marcus Trufant. And Cam Chancellor was there, but his overall was still kind of low, too. So I ended up implementing that defense, and I put it together just like that. Huh. Just came out. Just ended up being the perfect recipe of one of the best secondaries of all time. 
Hmm. I haven't got any credit for that. I don't. I, I don't know if that story holds any water, though, bro. I gotta say, well, the story is not supposed to hold water. It's not a bucket. <laughs> well, moving forward, since this is why this is one of the reasons why I became a YouTuber, especially for Madden, because of the fact that I have I have an eye for talent. <laughs> yeah, well, um, once Madden comes out this year, you're definitely more than welcome to grab a couple L's from me. And best believe we'll we'll be playing a few for sure. You never you never beat him. He's a he's a difficult opponent. I gotta say he's he knows his game. Um, he's always lurking out there. But I, I feel like this year is going to be the year. I really do. Madden seems to cheat for Raider Raven. No, never. Madden seems to cheat for Raider. It does it because never every does. time we play, it's always some crazy <laughs> turnover <laughs> that happens to me. That oh, ends up costing me the game because I can I'll play a flawless game. I can play a flawless game. I can remember. I, I don't know what Madden this was because this one still sits in my head till still to this day. He was using the Raiders or whatever. Oh, I remember this game. Right. And he broke a tackle. He broke a tackle with the quarterback. He throws the ball and the receiver slides to the ground. Well, my defender is right there and he catches the ball on fourth down. That is some fluky crap I, I that I've seen in my life. So heated. He was so heated, guys, and he's like, this game is raggedy. I swear he was going crazy, dude, and for a good reason, too. He, he legitimately got hosed in that game off of something that should have been an interception for sure. Um, I, I still remember the first game I played against you on, the, on your stream in Madden 19. Uh, is that the one where you got really frustrated? No. Now this is the one where I was like, I don't expect to win all the way through the game, and then like the end of the game, I'm like, I think six points behind. Yeah, yeah, that was. And that you was fumbled good game. it like the three yard line. I returned it all the way back. <laughs> yeah, that that was okay, a dagger done. through the heart for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, uh, great one, Devor. If you've listened to the previous couple podcasts, you kind of know how we wrap them up. Um, we are going to ask you. This is by viewer request only. Um, name any controversial topic and give your stance on it. It doesn't have to be aliens. That's just what it was last week. But if you want to be uh, talking about aliens, then go ahead. Um, it was Narcos last week that we talked about, and he's like, he gave his opinion on whether or not he thinks aliens exist. But I want you to think of any controversial topic and give your standpoint on it. Well, uh, as far as recently... Probably one of the biggest topics that have broken the internet was the announcement of the color of Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh boy! <God. laughs> I heard about this. Right I heard about this, dude. I think so they're going to make uh, what do they call those movies? Like the Lion live King action. And... live action. Okay, so they're. I guess they run, Disney is running out of ideas, so they want to come out with live action movies for all these classical Disney movies. So it's Little Mermaid's turn. <laughs> announced that the Ariel, which is the, the Little Mermaid, is going to be played by a black female. Now, if you saw Little Mermaid back in the early '90s, it was you know it was a Caucasian redheaded cartoon. Yeah, you know, the image that everyone knows Ariel from Little Mermaid as? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, to be quite honest with you, me personally, I don't care if, if Little Mermaid is purple. I, it, it, it's a girl is a girl. But I just see people going back and forth about, oh my God, my childhood is ruined because <laughs> Little Mermaid is black, but... I mean, you can always <laughs> do what I did with the Aladdin movie and just not watch it. I think it's cool that they're portraying uh, um, a different character as a different race. Like, because I always thought black people couldn't what's, swim. What's the reason for? I, it, I always though? thought black people couldn't swim. So, like, this is diversity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Incredibly <laughs> racist comment. There, there were seven. There are seven white female Disney princesses. Can the black folks have one? They have one. They have one. Princess of the Frog. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot, I yeah. that she's I not a main that. princess though. She yes, is she not, is. She she's is. in the Disney no, she princess. When you go to a category. Toys R Us or any toy store when they have the collection set for princesses, there are no oh. black princesses there. Did you see Re- Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet? No, that broad ain't black. She's in there. She's she's in there. See? They have all the Disney princess, all the official Disney princesses in this movie. And they're all talking to Penelope, the little girl in the movie. And she's there. So. What's the princess and the frog's name? Uh, princess's name? I don't know. I never watched the movie. I have no idea. <laughs> My point is that everybody knows all the major princesses in the DC. <laughs> I said DC. Let's Disney see. movies. What the princess? Aurora. Was it Aurora? Can black folks get Ariel, please? No white. All right, you know what? Like I'm, willing to, I'm willing to concede Ariel. Jasmine. You can have her. I mean, Jasmine was Arab before being Arab was a thing. She was Arab before. See, even the Indians got one. Can the black folks get a major <laughs> one? She's not Indian. She's Arab. She's Arab. <laughs> okay, Arab. They're completely Excuse different. The Indians have don't have one, one yet. Can we please have one? Is that too much to ask? You have. There's, you a, have there's an Asian Indian. one that's not even really a princess. <laughs> Hey, Mulan. Yeah, Mulan one. was never a princess. Oh goodness gracious! But she's then, still a Disney Elsa, princess. Elsa from Frozen. She's a princess, but she's a queen. She's, 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 she's a, a new princess. school. She's a new school princess. We're talking about the vintage but old Moana. school nineties. Moana, Moana don't count. <laughs> don't count. <laughs> Mulan wasn't black. What are you talking about? Okay, so she, she's. Mulan is Asian. She's Chinese. Well, she's half black, right? Oh, she's Chinese. <laughs> Pure Chinese. Wait, who? This... Wait, no, no. See, I thought she was Native American. Moana is Polynesian. Ah, no, you're not talking about Mulan. You're talking about Moana. Moana is Polynesian. She is. She is Samoan. Samoan. She's Polynesian. That's yeah, right. Samoan, Polynesian, same thing. That's um, right. Mulan was Chinese. Because that whole movie was about Genghis Khan invading the China. Invading the China? Invading the China. Just not any China, just the China. The China. You know what? I'll, I'll, oh, I'm going to give you... I have three two-year-old you, girls. You... I've seen just about every Disney princess movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm willing to concede, Ariel. I think you can have her. I think I think it's time for the black people to have her. So. But what what's the point in changing the race of the character, though? It doesn't make it just come up with a new story. Here's the thing. Here's the way I see it, Sarge. You're not diversifying anything. You're taking something and changing it into another thing. Listen, here's my standpoint on it. Original idea. Here's my standpoint on it. If it has potential of causing good, then do it. I think, but it also has potential of causing bad because you know how people go over the wall with every little thing. Is that really who we're worried about, though? Are we really worried about people who think Ariel's evil because she was white? <laughs> I agree. I mean, it doesn't make any sense Again, to change this it. Is, this is why, why this is a controversial why even topic. The live I mean, I really don't care that they hired a black actress. I think it is dumb that people get worked up over it, but I, I don't think that's that what I'm they, saying. But why do you? But my thing is, is to do it just because she's black. I think is equally as dumb as to do it. That's what I'm saying. Hire the best something new to the story. Hire the, the best thing? actress out there to play her, and if this happens to be her, wonderful. Yeah, yes. How 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 do we know she just didn't, uh, just kill kill the uh, actual interview or like, yeah and, uh, yeah we don't know that. yeah we don't know yeah. that. and if that's what it is, congratulations. I, I, I'm not against it. I'm not. I'm kind of in the middle ground that I don't think race should even enter into the equation. I think, and this is just not just for actors. I think it's for any job. You know, if the person is good, hire them. If they're not, don't. See, my only the only reason I didn't go see Aladdin wasn't because Will Smith was a genie, because Robin Williams wasn't the genie. You know oh I mean? yeah, he kind like, of Robin Williams character. was the guy to play the genie. Aladdin. And then you take him out of it, and I don't think anybody could do it as well. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, 
I'm that I'm way with, with you. Batman. I will never again watch another Batman because I know that there we, will never again be another Joker even close to as good as Heath Ledger ever was. Well, what if it's That's like a true. what if it's a Batman like with the Riddler? Would you not go see a Riddler Batman movie? Uh, if it's or not Jim Carrey was Jim terrible. Carrey, then I will I will watch it. Anyway, that'll <laughs> do it for this week's Mark podcast. Hamill, easily the best Joker. Uh, great one, Devor. Um, go ahead and tell us about your YouTube channel and your podcast. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put your uh, links down below, but go ahead and give us uh, uh, a quick teaser to what you're doing on your channel. Uh, as you said, do we talk about a whole lot of Miami Dolphins stuff on my actual Great One Devore channel, but I just made another YouTube channel for podcast it's called the not for debate podcast like i said it's a it's a work in progress we're still trying to get you know schedules intertwined that's why i love you guys podcast so much because you guys are very consistent and like it's not easy i'll tell, put it to you like this up to 12 o'clock in the morning for everybody to get all to record a podcast it is it is very very hard <laughs> so i will applaud you guys for doing that because I, I i just sometimes i just can't do it i'll just be laying down and be like yo you ready to record i'm laying it down it's 11 59 at night <laughs> sometimes i just ignore the text or i just be like oh. <laughs> well we certainly appreciate it yeah it's, it's it's this is kind of something that we uh took on and we're trying to make it work as best as possible and we communicate with one another we we haven't been doing it every week but uh we try to be as consistent as possible so but we definitely thank you and like i said your links your twitter as well as your youtube channel uh link is going to be down in the description of this uh podcast um so with sarge chris and myself and great one of war signing on out until next I got week one more question one more question yes sir great one of war how does it feel to know that you guys accidentally fell into Dan Marino in the draft because the Jets were dumb and never win a Super Bowl with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Can you repeat that question one more time? <laughs> How does it feel to have your team accidentally fall into Dan Marino in the draft because the Jets were dumb and didn't take him and still not win a Super Bowl with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? Well, how do, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Double R, because this is going to have to be... <laughs> I'm going to have to break this down to him. Go for it. Uh, at, least you, you, at least you can admit the fact that he is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. And that we didn't win a Super Bowl, but hey, when it comes down to it, how many teams How many teams with the actual one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time actually won a Super Bowl? Uh, the Steelers? The Patriots? Ooh, oh, the Steelers is the greatest quarterback of all, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Terry Bradshaw, four Super Bowls. And Dan Marino. Different era, probably. Eh, I don't know. It, that's, that's not even as good as Dan Marino. I'll give you that. He's probably not as good as Dan Marino, but he was in a tougher season. He was in a tougher, tougher league. We had to play. You didn't have to play the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. We did. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Like really, outside of the Chicago Bears, who was, who was a who was a competitive defense that Terry Bradshaw had to play? The Cowboys. Well, they played the Cowboys in the in the Super Bowl. Uh, the Raiders had a good defense in the seventies. Yeah, the Raiders. Yes, but the still, still, when it, good when it comes 30s. down to us having this conversation of the greatest of all time, because to be quite honest with you, I still to this day will not concede that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. I still think it is still Dan Marino. It just does Aaron not Rogers. just come down to rings. Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady. <clears throat> that's anyway. that too, but I think that's a little bit more, a little far fetched for me to say. I would even throw Peyton Manning in there too as well. But more I think Peyton than just, Manning was a better play caller. No, I, no. When I when I look at the greatest of all time, I look at how you perform without that quarterback. Oh yeah. Oh, the Steelers Patriots. definitely sucked without Tom. The ship, is without still, the ship is still on course when Tom Brady is not in the lineup, and it's been proven the New England Patriots don't end up losing the big game is because of the fact that 
the Bill Belichick defense never shows up to play the game. Well, that might be at risk now, too, because Gronkowski is not playing this year. So they're, they're down one huge weapon. Absolutely. When we Literally. sit down and we talk about <laughs> Julian Edelman being one of the greatest receivers of all time. No, we, let's let's watch this 2019 season and see and see what his level of productivity is going to be. I want to, you know, now, now that you mentioned Julian Edelman, I got to say, I want to see how bad Antonio Brown is without without Big Ben throwing to him. I'm sure he'll have astronomical he'll numbers. Oh, well, he'll have he'll have good numbers because he's going to be the number one wide receiver still. But I don't think he's going to get anywhere near the numbers that he got on the Steelers because they were always. I mean, you have to worry about him, and you have to worry. You had to worry about Bell, so you had to play up. I mean, who who do the who do the Raiders great have for a, who a running one. back here now? I feel like I want to hear more of this on your podcast. See if you can get <laughs> see if you can get Sarge on your podcast. I, I feel like this would be a good a good. Duo All right, man. I just wanted to poke fun about Dan Marino, man. <laughs> did, he stay up, did he stay up past twelve o'clock at night? Yes, he so can I don't stay get up home past till twelve o'clock. <laughs> so you got yourself a new podcast guest. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Until next week, where we unveil a new podcast and a new special guest. We're all checking on out. We will see you next week. Go Steelers. Go Capitals. Go Raiders. Go Dolphins. Fins up. <laughs> <laughs>